the channel everyone, Sergio from Panic Flip Gaming. It's been a heck of a long time. Thank you very much for uh, uh, being patient and uh, continuing to subscribe to the channel even though there hasn't been any new content uh, posted uh, recently, actually the last few months. Uh, truth be told, uh, life has just been busy. Um, some of you obviously have been checking out the channel know that I was very uh, visual pinball centric. Uh, unfortunately, I sold my visual pinball machine. Uh, I decided to get back into collecting real arcade machines again, and I did acquire some real pins as well. And so, over the next uh, you know handful of videos, I'll kind of go through uh, you know the machines I acquired, uh, what I did to them uh, to get them to their uh, you know uh, their current condition, and then visit uh, you know my my uh, latest uh, pinball acquisitions as well. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoy uh, just a different chapter in Panic Flip Gaming's uh, you know channel, if you will. So I hope you all stick with me and continue to watch. Uh, today I wanted to talk about uh, something I visited uh, on one of my videos uh, probably six months ago or so, which was my Street Fighter 2. You may see in the corner of the camera here uh, where I had actually updated the computer and um, did a full uh, installation of CRT MU driver, which basically allows you to play uh, real arcade games or through MAME, I should say, um, on a CRT monitor, a 15 kilohertz CRT monitor and giving it that true arcade uh, look and feel. Um, and, and obviously the refresh rate, which is very important um, so that games you know run as smoothly as possible through emulation compared to the real thing. So. Uh, funny enough, it's one of those videos that I did, it, you know, I didn't think it was going to go anywhere and it seemed to get quite a lot of interest and a lot of views and so people have reached out to me, they've asked a few questions, um, you know, and not, not to be the arcade Nazi, uh, you know, now that I'm back collecting again, I hate to see cabinets destroyed uh, over people wanting to do meme and then ripping out the CRT and, and putting in an LCD screen. Uh, and I'm a big advocate of, of, of trying to create uh, a CRT feel with an LCD. But there's just no replication for uh, an old CRT monitor. So uh, what I wanted to do today is just showcase my latest project uh, using uh, a pretty standard uh, arcade cabinet uh, that was made in the early 90s by a company called Dynamo. Um, it's just behind me here. I try to move out of the way in case you guys can see it. This is a Dynamo HS2. Uh, very specific. There was never really any dedicated versions of these cabinets. Uh, Dynamo, Dynamo made them. Um, it was basically um, uh, a good base for a kit, if you will. And then companies like Capcom and many others, you know, would buy the cabinets and then they would throw, you know, whatever game. In this particular case, it was actually Caveman by Data East. And uh, it was sold to the operator as, as, as such. Um, or oftentimes, you know, the operator would remove the game board if it wasn't generating any money, and then they would convert it to something else. So. This is a very, very good, good foundation, uh, you, you know, for a main build where you're not destroying a classic cabinet, for example, like a Pac-Man, you know, or a Street Fighter, uh, you know, whatnot. So uh, I just wanted to go over, um, you know, some of the things I've done uh, just to show you guys that you can create, uh, you know, a good main or a nice main setup without having to destroy the internals of the cabinet. And keeping everything kind of stock looking and then you know uh, if you want to re revert back to, to, to stock you can so with uh, you know within 10 minutes or so so that's basically it I'm gonna take off the tripod I'm gonna you know uh, kind of circle back around the cabinet just show some of the things I've done all right guys welcome back uh, so I've got you set up here hopefully the light above the ceiling isn't too bright so again this is uh, Dynamo HS2 um, it's got a caveman ninja uh, kit it's obviously missing some of the artwork. Um, you know, I haven't quite buttoned up the cabinet yet. I have to finish it off today, but I just wanted to show you guys what I've done. Uh, quite a fun game, actually. Uh, not something I would typically add to my collection, but this game did uh, come in at a very good price. Uh, essentially cost me nothing. Um, by the time I sold the game board, I came with it. Uh, well, the extra game board essentially literally cost me nothing. So anyway, I uh, just wanted to show you guys. So this is a typical... Um, <clears throat> Dynamo HS2 control panel, right? So, you know, this particular case, it's got the Data East Caveman um, control panel overlay with a cute little dinosaur uh, about to chew your head off. <laughs> and, uh, you know, typical three button setup, two joystick, player one, player two buttons. So, um, typically these cabinets are wired for JAMA. 
Uh, everybody that knows arcade machines know that Jam is a standard for uh, pretty much the 90s, uh, where you can just swap out game boards uh, very easily, as long as they were Jam based. And the operators love this because, you know, essentially save them from buying, you know, um, new cabinets all the time. You can just switch out boards, right? So. Um, what I've done uh, typically, uh, the, the area where you see the PC here, this is where the game board will be located. So here's a JAMA connector, connects into the game board, and then obviously uh, with some wiring and some trickery, you get obviously the uh, you know the uh, display on the screen. Here's your typical power supply. Here's your ISO isolation transformer for the monitor, and then uh, the fuses and whatnot. So essentially, the beauty about this is that you don't need to disturb anything within the cabinet. The HS2 is very unique that it has a slide out drawer, so you can almost pull it out in, in its entirety to give you access, uh, you know, to placing your components. Uh, think of it as a, a tabletop. And so what I've done is I bought Andy's um, from Altamark, Andy from Altamark, uh, the J-Pack. And the J-Pack essentially allows you to connect your JAMA uh, harness connector uh, right to it. And then you've got your VGA cable and your USB cable that plug into the back of the PC. So the VGA cable connects into the back of the video card, as you see here. And then obviously the USB port connects into the back of the computer. So the computer we're looking at here is nothing special. It's a $60 computer, HP Elite uh, 8300, small form factor. Um, it has an i5, I think third generation. It didn't come with a hard drive, but I bought a cheap uh, 256 uh, gigabyte hard drive off of Amazon it cost me I think like 35 bucks um, and I bought a, a cheap uh, I think it's an ATI or an AMD I'm not sure uh, 5450 HD uh, video card cost me $20 I think it's a 512 megabyte card they also come in one megabyte uh, or sorry one gigabyte versions um, and that's all that's needed for the CRT MU driver in terms of components uh, Andy from Andy's Arcade has a very in-depth um, video on how to install CRT MU driver that I also covered on my Street Fighter video. Uh, but I am going to leave some links below to Calamity's um, GitHub page. Calamity is actually the one um, that create or created and still uh, fine-tunes uh, Groovy Main which is essentially what you need to run alongside CRT MU driver to give you that true arcade resolution. Uh, so I'll leave links to that below. There's plenty of videos on that. If you guys need a video showing me how to do it and, and how to install it, I can. Seems like a lot of you prefer, you know, the, uh, the how to install videos. But I just wanted to show you that you really don't need to destroy the cabinet. So you're keeping the CRT intact. And basically you've got your computer, you got your video card, your JPAC that converts the video signal into your monitor. And then you can see here, cause I have the marquee in place, but I'm utilizing um, the original speakers and they're just plugged into an external lamp. And I'll show that shortly, but I wanted to come back around here and just show you guys, there's my Neo Geo, by the way, that's gonna be on uh, one of the videos. Um, and here's the, Here's the uh, Dynamo HS2. It's got a serial number made in the USA. Yeah, you definitely don't see that anymore. And there's the back of the amp right there, as you can see below. But I just wanted to show you, there's none of the stock wiring has been disturbed. Everything is still intact. All the original connectors are intact. Nothing has been disturbed. Um, obviously, there's a bit of a mess down there because I haven't cleaned it up yet. And, um, you know, I'll show you guys. Uh, once everything is buttoned up and the game running, I want to show you, um, you know, how beautiful the monitor looks. Uh, but again, I just wanted to show you that you don't need to drill a million holes. You don't need to hack up your cabinet. You can do it nicely, um, you know, and you can retain the stock look without, you know, going crazy. So um, that's basically an overview of this. And I'm going to show you the what I've done uh, with the power button for the computer and also with the uh, amplifier for the speakers. Now, um, the beauty about this is that I've got everything connected to uh, a smart power bar, which means if you have the actual computer connected, hey, there's my doggy, hello. If you have the computer connected into the main outlet to the power bar and you have everything else connected, uh, almost like to the, we call it the slave outlets, 
once you turn the computer on, it turns the screen on, it turns your speakers on, it turns everything within the cabinet on, just like the real deal when you flick a switch. And when you power off the computer, it powers everything else off along with that. So very, very ingenious. Uh, again, I try to look for the uh, clean uh, setup. So let me show you the uh, amplifier now. All right, guys, so I got you back down here to show you. Um, I don't know if I can turn on my uh, my light or not. Let me see if I can. Oh, yeah, there we go. Um, so that's where I mounted my little amplifier. I bought this little guy for, I think, you know, 20 bucks, whatever it was. Um, just a cheap Lapai 2.1 um, amplifier. And it does the job quite nicely. Now, these Dynamo HS2 cabinets only come with one speaker. Um, you know, the sound was always mono. I added a secondary speaker just to try to, you know, give it that stereo sound, but you're always going to get only sound out of one side. And then there's the switch that turns the computer on and off. So, you know, I kept it nice and clean. Um, I think it did the job quite nicely. And yeah, let me just turn off the flash here. Um, and so what I've done is I've tied everything up. Um, I think you guys are going to get a kick out of this. I'm a huge fan of these smart strip um, power bars. And so usually what I do with all my builds, either being a pinball build or a main build, um, I'll typically buy these smart strips off of eBay. Uh, they seem to have the best prices. And so I bought a couple and uh, I'm going to need a couple more actually. But the concept behind this is basically the control outlet uh, always ends up being your computer. And then you have the option to have some a uh, couple of uh, always on outlets, which I never use. And then here's your automatically switch outlets, which is basically your slave outlet. So what happens here is, you know, I plug in uh, the amplifier and also the cabinet, the main cabinet AC cord to these, you know, one of these outlets. And what happens is when you turn on the computer, um, you know, everything will come on, you know, marquee, monitor, speakers, etc. And I'll show you guys uh, what I mean by that. So as I was filming this, um, you know, or, or prepping to film this, I got a kick out of it. So look at this. This is a dollar. I bought this on eBay. I bought two of them, I think, for like 10 bucks. And they usually go for about $15 each or so. Um, so look at the markup the guy made on, on a couple of power bars. Um, definitely got them for a bargain <clears throat> and sold them for a lot more. Perhaps it would have been wise to maybe remove the sticker, right? But good old eBay. So I'm going to toss this aside and uh, we're going to do a power up so I can show you guys. Um, sorry, it's kind of crooked here. And uh, actually, I'll take you back around just to show you the, the monitor. I still have to mount the um, control board. Um, the old Wells Gardner monitor had these gigantic boards. Um, they're so awkward. Uh, the, um, the newer models had you know, a board that was basically half of this size and it mounted near the front of the cabinet. So I'm going to probably just mount this kind of off to the side, you know, something like that. So there's a monitor there, old 19 inch walls, Gardner 7000. And then I'm going to turn on the flash here again so you guys see. Let's just see here. There we go. And that's basically how the computer mounts, you know what I mean? So, you know, while not the prettiest in terms of wiring, I mean, it's all going to be hidden. You're not going to see it. The main thing is that there's no obstructions on uh, any of the components. Everything works fine. I left the top open because I like the computer to get enough uh, enough airflow. And um, and so now I'm going to turn it on. And basically what we're going to do is we're going to come down here, turn the power on just like that. You can see the blue LED. And then... Uh, Obviously, give it a little bit. The computer has to boot up, and once the computer boots up, uh, everything else within the cabinet should uh, boot up as well. Let's just see here. There we go. Takes a little bit, a, lot, uh, a little bit, for the computer to kick in, but the marquee kicks in. Uh, the monitor is also on. Um, you know, you're not going to see anything out of the monitor right now because it's basically just uh, well, actually, it booted up pretty quickly. Uh, let me turn off the light here, guys. So there's the monitor there. I have to uh, brighten it up a little bit. It's a little bit dark. But um, for my front end, I'm using uh, LaunchBox Big Box. LaunchBox is basically the, um, the game configurator, if you will, where you add your games, delete your games, etc., etc. And then uh, Big Box is, you know, your main front end when you turn on the computer. I've been a huge fan of this 
of this uh, program. I've said it over and over again. I actually just renewed my license for another year. It's $15 US a year, uh, but you get so much content, so many updates, um, and $45 for a lifetime of usage. Uh, I urge you guys to literally pay the, the uh, pay the, um, the subscription fee, it's well worth it. Now, it might be a little bit loud, so the beauty about this is I can adjust the sound again with the amplifier right down here, right? And uh, so I'm gonna boot it into a game here. I don't have my buttons configured yet, so let me just... Uh... And here's the main menu right uh, right now. It, it resorts back to the last game uh, played on the machine uh, in those Streets of Rage, so you know, let's, uh, you know, what, what can we do here? I mean, there's so many good games. Actually, what I did too with my setup is I have about 40 games on this. I really added the games that I enjoy playing the most. And uh, there you go, lo and behold, Caveman Ninja. So, you know, let's boot up Caveman Ninja while we're at it because, I mean, it's only fitting, right, for the, you know, for the, uh, the game. Um, boots up rather quickly. Um, and that's it. That's all there's to it now. You know, you're gonna see the obviously the flashing on the screen. That's just a refresh rate uh, from the uh, CRT. It's not gonna match my uh, phone's uh, video camera. That's just the way it is. But I mean, look at the resolution. I can zoom in here, and you can just see how gorgeous the picture is. So. You know, I hope that this video helped a lot of you out um, that were maybe sitting on the fence about, uh, you know, taking an arcade cabinet and, and, you know, making a main build out of it uh, using an LCD. Um, if the monitor still works, um, you know, don't, don't throw it out. Reuse it uh, using the components I showed you guys. Um, you know, you can have arcade perfect quality picture. And you can have many different uh, games. You know why seclude the cabinets, you know, to one game when you can have a lot of, um, you know, a lot of other games, right? So that's my train of thought. Um, a lot of people say, ah, you know, monitors, CRTs are just a pain. They're not. Um, these old 19-inch monitors are usually Wells Gardner's K7000. There's tons of parts available for them. Tons of people that work on them. Um, you know, and I, I hate to say it, but these monitors will probably outlast a lot of us. They've out, you know, they, they've lasted 30 years. Um, and chances are they'll be here long before we're gone. So, or after we're gone, I should say. Uh, so that's it. So Caveman Ninja, uh, say if I want to back out, uh, I hold player one, player two brings me back to the main menu. And, uh, from here, Again, I have many different games that I could select. Um, you know, POW Prisoners of War, that's a classic. Uh, I also have some Sega Genesis games on it. Uh, good old R-Type, you know, Shinobi. Uh, it's just all kinds of stuff. Splatterhouse, Streets of Rage, Strider, Superman. Uh, one of my favorite actual games, uh, Thunder Force. I used to own this on my Sega Genesis. I absolutely loved it. Um, Wonder Boy, which is another classic. WWF Superstars. Uh, WWF WrestleFest as well, which is another classic. And uh, I'm just going to boot up Vigilante here. I actually owned this for the TurboGrafx-16. It was definitely one of my favorite games. And, oh, it looks like we have some kind of a refresh rate here. Huh, that's kind of funny. Um, I've noticed a couple of games do this. I'm not sure why. I'm going to have to maybe adjust the, um, you know, the uh, vertical hold in the back of the machine. but Or the back of the monitor. But yeah, guys, that's it. Uh, and then you can shut the whole machine down from here. So that's my main build. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if there's any questions, you know, please feel free to, uh, you know, reach out and, and ask away and I'll help as much as I can. Until next time, peace.